What's going on, everybody? It's Webster Style. Brian Sapp. You know what it is. Another NRW Checkpoint, where we talk about the latest and greatest in video game releases, news, and just we're gamers. We love games, so we always talk about it. Brian, how you doing, man? I'm doing okay. How about yourself? How you feeling? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We got a lot going on this coming week. Um, we have the Nintendo Showcase, not Nintendo, uh, Xbox Showcase on this coming Sunday. And I believe there's a yes. Nintendo Showcase on the 11th. So by the time we come back next week, there will be a lot from Microsoft as well as Nintendo. But yes. last week, we had Sony and their showcase. What did you think of it, Brian? Oh, uh, yeah. It was okay. I wasn't like super blown away by anything that they sh they showed, but I still was able to like take away some um, some. I don't know. It left a good impression on me, even though I wasn't like, oh my god, I wasn't blown away. But I was still like, okay, some of these games I'm, I'm looking forward to. Yeah, you know, I am. Um, I'll say this again, and I know you feel the same way. I hate the internet. I hate YouTubers. <laughs> uh, like passionately. Uh, but I would say in this case, the sentiment with this showcase, I think it's Sony's done it to themselves because they yeah. haven't really shown anything for the past year except for Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Um, that's so, that, yeah, they've kind of done it to themselves in that regard. Um, but I'll say all in all, they had some decent games there. I think Astro Boy, everybody probably say was the highlight of that show. I can um, agree. I don't know what it is, but the Silent Hill 2 remake to just... It looks off. <laughs> it, it straight up looks off to me. Didn't care for it. Yeah. It, it's something about it is not working. And I think we are. We are very spoiled because mm -hmm. of the RE remakes and how mm -hmm. good they were and how mind blowing they were mm -hmm. to see this. Silent Hill 2 remake, and it's like, uh, okay, it seems very yeah. lackluster. Um, I think all in all, like, it's a it was an okay showcase. I wouldn't say it was yeah. great. I wouldn't say yeah. it was, like, ass either. Mm -mm. Nah. Uh, was it really good? No, it, it was okay. I, I would literally give it a 5 out of 10. <laughs> like, it, it's very middle of the road for me. Um, yeah, yeah. Nothing that was exciting. Some games look pretty cool. I know when one game everybody hated though. What's that? Conqueror. Conqueror. Yes. <laughs> Which is funny because I actually don't mind it. The game to me, the way it looks, you know, kind of cool or whatever. It kind of remind me of uh, like a mix between Overwatch and Apex with um, some Borderland type of aesthetic to it. Um, I don't know. That one, I was, I didn't feel negatively like the rest of the the people did. I, I was more so like you, like in the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up on the, uh, or I'm gonna try to get in on the beta that they got coming on July. If I like what I played during the beta, then when it launches in August, I'll give it a try. But I'm not, I don't hate it. It, it looked fine to me. Yeah, I think. What you said is perfectly reasonable, and I think it looking fine is probably the problem most people have. It doesn't <laughs> right. look like anything special. From right, I, I saw one video. I got. I saw. I went down a rabbit hole last night. I saw one guy talking about how Concord was an example of what? Well, how do you put it? DEI woke character design. It's <laughs> not like oh what? god, <laughs> right? It's, he went he went down the rabbit hole uh, um, in that regard. But racist. It, but it doesn't look inspiring at all. Um, and especially for a five on five hero shooter, right? Why am I going to play this? Especially when it's rumored to cost sixty bucks. Now, and, if that is the price tag, we have an issue. Yes, because <laughs> again. Why? Why would I do that when there's other five v five games? I just name Overwatch. Yeah, like, right. Overwatch two is free. Like, yeah, we right. had to pay for Overwatch one, but the, it's free and it's a better game. Well, at least based on what I can tell. Right. Um, I don't know. I'm. I'm not like I said. I'm not upset about it though. I'm gonna try to beta, see if I like it, and if if not, then you know, I'm not paying. Well, no, I, I can't see myself paying the sixty. But if this is Sony, because 
This is coming from Sony Studios, if I'm yeah. Not. This is a uh, phony Sony's uh first party Firewalk, I believe is the name of the studio. Okay, so after they realize we're not spending the money they want, us to, <laughs> <laughs> they'll probably put it free, and then you know for like a PlayStation um plus a uh, monthly game or whatever. That's what they should have done. They should have done that in the first place. <laughs> you know, and I had hope for them because I want to say like the last year or two um there have been some titles that come out and they go straight to playstation plus you can get it free for that month if you miss it then you you know gotta pay and and i actually like that like let me get it let me get it for a month especially this is a new title that's coming out from playstation studios let me get it you know fully developed and functioning for a month or whatever i mean obviously if i get it i understand I but it yeah, didn't you know work for foam stars. It didn't work for foam stars. Uh, another one that was that, so much yeah. potential. I think <laughs> I think um I think Sony needs to pivot and maybe start, you know, coming with a little bit more originality, which is probably why Astro Boy or Astro Bot yes. has such an impact because it was like, oh, this don't look like anything else that's out there. It's not a copy. And I'll say this, and th mm -hmm. this is direct contrast to Concord, because one of the big things I've heard about Concord is we don't want another hill shooter. We don't want the same types of games. We want something right. different. And that's what Astro Boy, let me, so Sony's not listening to their customer base when it comes to Concord, but then you have Astro Boy, and I think from day one, many gamers across the world have asked for more Astro Boy after getting that pack in with the PS5. So yeah. they listened, they actually did it. So they did something good in that regard. Right. I just think that Sony has shown in the past year that mm. they've been very tone deaf to, to their customer base. Yeah, they, have, they don't be listening to us like they should. And in many respects, and, and I say again, I say this is someone who, who is very interested in the Xbox ecosystem. When mm -hmm. the outside looking in, they don't like y'all. They just like your money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's the challenge that we have they to do. They don't listen to y'all. Y'all complain, y'all look. Just the only thing they listened with, and they even do that right, was the whole Hell Divers do PSN. They retracted right. it, but they didn't really retract it. But yeah. now, guess what? Ghost Shima need a PSN. Um, God of War Two Ragnarok on PC need PSN. It's like nobody wants that, but it is what it is. Sony's doing what they want to do because they are the market leader, right? But like I said, overall, not a terrible showcase. Just. It was whelming. It wasn't under or over. It was yeah. right in the middle. Um, some some notables, I'll say before we move on real quick. Um, I'm looking forward to Dynasty Warriors Origin. I've just always been a fan of the franchise. Yeah, Dynasty Warriors is cool, but that's multiplat. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. Xbox, yeah. So it don't really count. Um what uh, I, I, I would have said, oh, Marvel's Rivals. I've been talking about this game. For yes, life. you have. And <laughs> I'm, right. I'm glad that's coming to consoles, and that's again another multi platform. Too. Agree, agree, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of interested in. Um, I mean, Path of Exile looks dope, but that's probably I probably was interested in more so in that because uh, it has like a co-op mode. Which, yeah, for whatever reason, why are we not making more co-op games? Like, I don't want to play with a whole team of niggas all the time. Just give me my dog. Let let me right. run. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But whatever. And you would then, think after it takes uh -huh. two. More companies will be doing that. Right. I just, I don't know, but hopefully they figure that out because I want more co op games. I could just one person, we just tag team. I think yeah. that, that's great. Um, And then Astro Boy, I mean, Astro Bot, I keep saying yeah. Boy. There were some other games too, but I kind of went over the state of play, at least how I felt about it on the latest episode of the Talk okay. Play hey, Word hey, Pod. Check, which check is out, out more there. For your listening pleasure. <laughs> so all right. I, that's all I say, but. Again, the highlights for me, Astro Bot and the, the um announcement for Marvel's Rivals coming the console. They teasing Black Panther uh being added to the game. Um, they talked about the beta that's supposed to be coming in July, which I'm gonna do my hardest to get into that. Mm -hmm. So it was good news there. Okay. Yeah, I think um Sony needs to do something. Definitely, like let's um, make some games. But yeah, yeah. It, you know, get in the booth, Sony. I think at this point, I mean, Sony needs to blow their load 
just to keep people happy. Get it out the um, way. Even if the games aren't ready, like show something. Cause yeah. The there the showcases in the last one, the when they showed Spider Man was a state of play. More and more of their games that they're showing mm-hmm. are multi platform games. Yeah. And I it, it's weird to say, like I think about Xbox, I don't care, I don't think about multi plats for the most part. I think I'm, about that first party, first party right. that are coming out. And you out. know what's crazy? What? As a PlayStation player, I don't really care about the game being multi-platform either. Right. But I, I do because PlayStation, they, they set a precedent with the way that they, you know, have been moving in the industry to where, you know, I at least expect a very, very good, solid, like, first party, triple A PlayStation exclusive. And for whatever reason, I mean, I guess Spider-Man 2 probably was the last one that was like really like, oh, yeah, this got the community excited. But y'all riding off the backs of Marvel with that. Exactly. I I need something that's going to come along like like how y'all did uh, God of War and Ragnarok and and, um, what's the game with the with the girl with the bow and arrow? Um, Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's been a minute, but both of those came out in what, 2022, I think? Right. Yeah, it's been a minute. Fresh off the um, heels of the pandemic where we was not trying to spend no money on no games. Right. <laughs> we still ain't trying to spend money. Um, but so speaking of, of Sony, let's get into this week's games. First up, we have, Wait. I believe this is the final expansion for Destiny in Sony. Bungie owns Sony, if you don't know. Um, Destiny in the Final Shape, dropping on PS4, 5, Xbox One, SX, and PC. The Final Shape looms. A nightmare's calcification of reality into the witness's twisted design. Embark on a perilous journey into the heart of the traveler. Rally the vanguard and end the war of light and darkness. So if I remember this correctly, this is the final expansion for destiny 2 we'll see it will see because <laughs> they've been milking destiny 2 for a long time i mean and on top of that the player base has been steady yeah they've been destiny's been around has it been has it been more than 10 like years decade. Since? yeah that's yeah. crazy to think from destiny 1 to destiny 2 i think i think i downloaded destiny 2 once and i i was like no <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just no. um it's a learning curve there and definitely a skill curve. You got to level your characters. I mean, your, your avatar up so that you can like even necessarily compete with everybody else playing the game. That's been on it for like years and years, but um, I don't know. I found fun in it, but then I also haven't played it in several years now. So, right. I guess that speaks to what you're saying. <laughs> Understood. Uh, before we get to the next game, we did have a couple of announcements that came out today okay. uh, which on part of the list. So Octopath Traveler 2 is now on Xbox and previously only was released for the Switch and the PlayStation 5, I think it was, or 4 okay. or 5. Fire. It's now on Xbox and in Game Pass as of today. And Good. then with that, Octopath Traveler 1 is now on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 because Octopath Traveler 1 was only released on Switch and Xbox. Yeah. Square's <laughs> like, yeah, we trying to get all this money now. We ain't being stupid no more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is smart because yeah, Sony don't got nothing else. They, I'm right. pretty sure they cut you a nice deal because they ain't got nothing else in it. Can at least from what I can tell. Right, exactly. Yeah. So next up is realistically, it's a it's a slow week, um, but this is a game I've been looking forward to, and I watched a couple of reviews on it the the other day, and you know we've talked before and. I have not expressed my displeasure, but I haven't really been that excited for these asymmetric multiplayer games. Um, you know, we talked about Ghostbusters before when I came out. We talked about um, with the Evil Dead as well right. and Texas Chainsaw Massacre also. And it was a fun to watch. Don't get me wrong, especially Texas Chainsaw. And that's still on Game Pass, if I remember correctly. But this is a game because of the whole license. I was like, oh, I can't wait for this. It's right. Killer Clowns from Outer Space um, <laughs> on the PS5, Xbox Series systems, and PC. Uh, I believe what this is circa 1988. Uh, mm-hmm. 
cult classic horror movie horror camp sci-fi it's it's, it's a great fun movie it's one of my favorites from the era uh but okay. killer clowns from outer space the game is an asymmetrical multiplayer horror game based on the iconic 80s film players take on the role of the iconic killer clowns and cooperate in a team of three which is different it's somewhat reminiscent of texas chainsaw what they did with uh leatherface grandfather and um i forget the uncle's name there Right. And cooperate in a team of three to harvest humans or save them uh, from the alien invasion, which is a different twist. Uh, <laughs> the game offers a familiar gameplay loop with, for the game with the human players locating an escape route within a given environment while clowns use their unique abilities to capture and kill humans. Now, I thought this would be your normal run of the mill, you know, asymmetrical horror game, but no. I was watching some reviews on it. They do some really cool things with the different classes of clowns. Like they used to do different things, but mm -hmm. also it's, it's three clowns versus five humans. So right okay. there you have a, a, a mismatch, but there are multiple exits for the humans to get out of mm -hmm. on a stage, but only a certain number can get out of any particular exit. So once, like, say, like the bridge, I think the bridge is like only two or three people can get over the bridge before it collapses. So you still have okay. two people left trying to survive. Like that as a like that difference adds a heightened layer of suspense to the game. Like, oh, that's really Definitely. interesting. Definitely. That's different. So I, I was like, be, uh, you would not go with what you said. No, I was going to say that's just different. That's definitely going to be something I'm looking, I'm interested in, you know, trying out to see because that, that whole dynamic as just a a different play style than what we've seen in this seen in this genre of game. Right. And I would, that's exactly what I was about to say. I'm interested in trying that, especially, you know, because I don't really do horror games that much, but I like Dead by Daylight. And this kind of got the same vibe to me. Um, but it, again, that mechanic you speaking about where it's like, oh, only three people can get over the bridge. Only two people can go out this door. Only one person can make it out this way. Like that as not only actually as suspense, but a strategy as well. Right. Because <laughs> in Dead by Daylight, like, you know, <sighs> players have not necessarily exploited the game, but they've played the game enough to understand the best strategy in order to get everybody out alive with this one, with there being limitations on that, the exits and how many players can utilize them. That that's flipping stuff all the way on its head. I'm um, excited to play that. Actually. I want to get that a try. Yeah. Same here. Do we, we know if it's going to be free? Um, I don't believe so. Um, okay. I don't think, I don't know if it gets the um, standard $60 and maybe 50, but we'll find out shortly. Okay. Um, last but not least is a game I totally forgot about. And I think we saw the trailer for this a long time ago. Okay. It's Star Wars Hunters is on mobile, iOS, Android, and Switch. Star Wars Hunters is a squad-based arena shooter set between the events of episode six and episode seven. Uh, players fight in, I almost forgot my Roman numerals for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, it's inspired by uh, Star Wars locations. The game is set to feature a diverse set of characters, including a Wookiee warrior, a female dark side, user a bounty hunter and an imperial stormtrooper okay all right so let's, 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 let's get to the trailers uh first up destiny the final shape Witness nears the final shape. It might have been a nightmare. It's reshaping reality into a perfect stillness. I'm done burying my friends. It's the end of everything. Might as well try to stop it. One last step. Together. to describe an infection festering you said it spoke to you 
The witness shows us what it thinks we want. It's a lie. Black Bear. Let us lift the weight of suffering. Join us. Zavala, please, don't do this. Nobody makes my fate but me. Oh, is that a new hero class coming? Is that what that means? Hmm. You know, with something like this, it's hard to really get enthused about this trailer when you know nothing about the lore of the game. <laughs> like, it looks cool, but it's like, uh, it, it, it means nothing to me. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody who played the game before, I don't even know the full <laughs> lore. <laughs> Uh, but the trailer does look cool and i know we said a few minutes ago like they've been milking destiny for a while but as i'm watching the trailer i actually kind of like that because now that i think about it like each dlc has been like a, a add-on to the game in the, yeah. in the sense that it's pushing the overall story forward yeah and um, i really can appreciate that i, I don't mind if the game, if you're going to give me a game that I like and then just keep on building on the story over years and years and years, I, I can see why people have stuck it out, especially those who have been there from the beginning oh, and yeah. they're enjoying the way that they're, the um, developers are like telling this overall story. So I actually, I think that's pretty cool. I wish, well, I, there's some other games I feel like could possibly learn from that, kind of build out a game, actually. No, no I agree. Hours. I I I am glad that something like this has caught on. Mm -hmm. Um, I I guess partially I am just I don't like the fact that Destiny and others who have been successful, who are really the outliers, have caused right. other companies to try to chase the same formula to massive failures over the years. Yeah, you um, know your so, audience and read the room, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Know your audience, read the room, and you know then most of y'all wouldn't be losing money and be shutting down studios the way y'all shut exactly. down. Not calling no names. I'm, we're talking about the past, not just the past six months. We're talking about the past five years. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah. All right. So that's out. That's Destiny the Final Shape. Um, next up is Star Wars Hunters. Live on the Outer Rim Sports Network. Okay, it's free to play. That's a good. That's good. A very good there. thing. I was wondering very about that. <laughs> very but good time. Can I tell you this? What's up? I may have my blur card revoked for this. I'm kind of <laughs> tired of Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars been listen in our faces literally since its inception. 
Star Wars. No, it's, it's been out face since Disney bought it. Let's get it right. It, it's been out face since Disney you know, bought it. I agree. And yeah, the past couple of years, I'm like, oh, I'm like every. The, okay, this is my opinion. <laughs> no, Star no Wars was special in that you didn't have like a new series or a new game every six months. Right. Or even and, a new movie. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we haven't had any movies in a while, which is a good thing. Um, right. But we've never not like had Star Wars in this current era. And I, I, when something's in your face all the time, you kind of, it loses its specialness about yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I would say too, now mind you, I know that the MCU was pumping out three movies a year, sometimes four um, at times, but that's where they got messed up. Yeah. Not okay. When you pump out that much content, and especially when you try to get to different audiences, some things are going to work, some things aren't. But the mm -hmm. things that don't work, they make it bad for everything else. I agree. I'm not saying that Star Wars Hunters is a bad game. It's a game mm -hmm. that has I have totally no interest in whatsoever because it's not a game I would play, and it's not anything that even a type of game I would play. So that's my personal opinion. <laughs> but it just seems like we're always talking about a Star Wars game. Uh, we just had the sequel to um, Outcast. No, what was the game with the the Jedi survivor, whatever? Um, um, it did start with an O. Yeah. Uh, yes. Then we got. Then we got Jedi Outcast is coming out. Mm -hmm. We got this game. I feel like there's something else. And then we got the Acolyte series, which just dropped this week. Um, I feel like we're always talking about Star Wars to some degree. Yeah, it, I agree. In my opinion, and this is a 45-year-old man who has literally <laughs> grown up with Star Wars, one of the first two movies, one of the first movies I remember seeing in theaters, I guess this mm -hmm. was five, because I remember a couple before there was Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. um, so I've lived with Star Wars my whole life for me the magic has gone a little bit now for the little people especially after going to see um, Phantom Menace mm -hmm. I understand Phantom Menace is for kids the prequels were for kids for new Star Wars fans I get that I get that a game like this is not for me it's for casual fans it's mm -hmm. using the IP um, and I hope it does well especially being free to play I agree. I'm not a, a huge Star Wars fan myself. Um, this is a style of game that I would be interested in playing. And I do like that it's free to play, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to the Switch. There's not very many free to play games on the Switch. They usually are large exactly. IPs like this. Yeah. So I'm I'm um happy about it in that regard, but it's like, you know, you're right, man. Star Wars has been Everywhere ever since, you know, Disney bought it, they've been really like, I'm we're gonna make as much money off of this as possible. And yep. continue I want grow. my nine billion dollars investment back. <laughs> right. Which I ain't mad at from I ain't mad at either. Standpoint. But I don't know. It it kind of has lost some of its like magic. And I think that's because Disney has really just been like, we're gonna give you Star Wars in every avenue possible. Yes. So we can take your money. But yes. I don't think they understand, like you said, the fan base is not, we, we're not set up like that. They used yeah. to taking a couple of years before a diff, um, the next movie comes out or the next TV series or even or a video. couple of decades. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's okay to chill. Like y'all have okay, IP. Yeah. They need to be relaxing and um, trying to come up with a way to extend the story. Like. Yeah. What what's next in the franchise other than a bunch of games based on characters and plot lines we already are familiar with? Right. Exactly. But, I don't know. I'm I'm with you though. I feel you. All right. Appreciate it, man. All right. Next up is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. But quick note, uh price is $39.99 for the base game, $59.99 for the deluxe. Okay. <laughs>
Silly Shore. Shadow Puppet. Oh, in Korea. Oh, yeah, that was the one thing. Like, if you die. You play mini games to help your teammates. I thought I was saying games. Oh, that is cool. Okay. Uh oh. Like a damn, I did like you. Use the resurrection machine to bring back dead friends. Yeah. Whoa! You brought everyone back. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can revive people. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That was, that was I I think that really kind of twisty whole asymmetric horror game um than what we've seen lately and also I Have you ever seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space? No. Oh. <laughs> man, it is is such a, a campy 80s movie. It it's I it's can, I can tell. <laughs> it it's is wonderful. Look, watch it if you can because okay. there it's just so it's such a cool fun movie to watch. Like you you cannot take it seriously at all. And I say that to say like the looking at the the game, the character designs are spot on uh full of clowns okay. and it's just I am like I said as a fan of 80s horror specifically but just horror in general and there're just some movies that just always resonated with me. Killer Clowns for Outer Space is always one of those movies where if it's on or if I can find it, I'm going to watch it. Okay. All right. I'm gonna take your uh your suggestion and see if I can um find it somewhere. I know it's it got to be streaming somewhere. Got to be. It's on Pluto, it's on Roku Channel, Three. it's on Tubi. Three. Three. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Look, okay. I had to look it up because I know you was gonna ask. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's what I need. Free right. ninety nine. Yeah, free ninety nine. Exactly. <laughs> so, Brian, you already alluded to what's going on, but what's going on with you this week, man? Uh, again, that talk and play blur pie episode is out. It came out earlier today for everyone's listening pleasure. Um, I I delve a little bit into all the beef we got going on. Um, well, recently. <laughs> I know because I, I took a little time off, never really got to give my thoughts, my closing remarks on Drake and Kendrick. And then, you know, got uh, the girls going at it, Cardi and B and now. Like, there's a lot going on in music or in hip hop or whatever, as far as beef is concerned. I want to um, point some things out, like the fact that, you know, yes, Drake caught this huge L to Kendrick Lamar, but the rest of them niggas he was beefing with, it. <laughs> I would count those as W's. It's just, and certain things that, that certain conversations that are not being had in hip hop right now, and I just kind of want to steer the conversation, steer the direction a little bit. On top of that, again, PlayStation State of Play, um, some new music I've been listening to, been watching a lot of stuff on TV, got into a new anime. So I'm just kind of full. It's a full episode. I'm talking about a lot. And then I'm, I don't know. We'll see how I feel because, you know, Summer Game Fest is about to kick off. Um, right. I'm interested. And whatever Nintendo is going to show, even though I don't think their their uh, direct is a part of Summer Game Fest, I still want to no, see. Not. Yeah, which I mean, but whatever. I still want to see what they got going on. So maybe I'll talk about that soon, as well as um, the Xbox showcase and the Ubisoft showcase. I want I want to order Ubisoft. Oh yeah, that board. is when is the Ubisoft showcase? I think um, theirs is I'm gonna say it's on the eighth. Okay, so it's Saturday. Yeah, let me let me let me. I don't want to get no no wrong information, but that's definitely uh coming as well. And I'm interested in that. You know, I'm big like I like Ubisoft. They're they're uh the Ubisoft for 2024 is June 10th. Okay, June. Okay, 10th. so it's Monday. Cool. 
All right. Yeah, yeah I I would I would have been very surprised if they went before Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely after on the list. I just didn't have the dates lined up properly. Yeah, because they usually debut something to Microsoft and then I think they did they did what Outcast last year where they debuted that at the Microsoft showcase and then they um, had their full possibly. thing. Possibly. I think so. Yeah, I think they that did. Sounds that sounds that's not right. Yeah. So yeah, that that's usually one of the MOs. They do that and then they you know like, hey, see more at the Ubisoft, whatever tomorrow. Right, right. Is. Yeah, so I'm excited I, for it though, because Splinter Cell, please, Splinter Cell. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> do you want more information about Splinter Cell? Yes. Look, that's all I need. That's all okay. I well, outside of that, I'm excited for Ubisoft's uh four because we know they pretty much got all the um Assassin's Creed stuff out of the way already. Right. So now, like, I don't want to hear nothing else. Why? <laughs> oh, you know, another Assassin's Creed coming as soon as we drop. Yeah, we care about that. Yeah, like, give me something else to work with Ubisoft, and I feel like they got something else they want to show off. Yeah, because they need to. Because they pretty much they just dropped X Defiant. They yeah. dropped Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown. They mm-hmm. they dropped uh, Assassin. We'll probably see more of Assassin's Creed Mar- or Shadows. Okay, it's, it's Shadows, right? Yeah. Yeah, more some game. We'll probably yeah, we'll probably see more of that, mm-hmm. but. Other than that, we know Division Homeland or Heartland, whatever it's called, was canceled. Mm-hmm. What do they have to show? Let me, I want to find out. That's the mystery. That's yeah. the mystery. But that's it for me. What about you? Um, working on a new episode of the podcast, I think it's 181. Um, so talking about uh, my thoughts on Star Trek Discovery this final season and how it resonated with me. Uh, talking about one of my pet, one of my main pet peeves about male style, um, wearing okay. a suit and not having a damn pocket square. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, also okay. talking about Kelly Counts from Outer Space is the download and then the fragrance of the week. It's going to be a short episode this week, but I'm talking about um, mm. Must Therapy from Intino, um, Initio, excuse me. Initio. Okay. Uh, so uh, you'll be seeing that and then all the segments cut up. Uh, also, the new. Game Bytes is out, uh, both for Webster Style and NRW. We went into uh, these horror games where we're looking at the quarry uh, on this week, so make sure you check it out. But that's what's going on with us. You know we are nerds of the world. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Newless Wednesday on X. is officially X now, which is weird. Um, <laughs> at the NRW. And of course, you're currently on YouTube, so make sure you like, you share, and of course, subscribe.